The Cat Theorem, also known as Brewer's Theorem, is a well-known principle in distributed systems that highlights the trade-off between three key guarantees in a distributed system. So we have consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. So this theorem states that a distributed data store can only provide at most two of the three of these properties. It can never simultaneously provide all three. So let's start off with partition tolerance. So a partition here refers to a network partition. So a network partition occurs when a network is unable to deliver messages reliably between some nodes. So take, for example, this node here. There is also another node over here. There is a network going between them. If this network in between them goes down, that is considered a network partition, leading to a temporary loss of connectivity. So basically, the system was partitioned into two or more non-communicating parts, and this represents a system's ability to operate seamlessly despite network failures. So even when communication between nodes in a distributed system is compromised due to the network partition. Now, in regards to consistency, in the context of a distributed system, this refers to the uniformity of data across different nodes. So every read receives an up-to-date value or it errors out. So a system that adheres to consistency aims to ensure that all nodes provide the same data simultaneously. So any request from any given node should return the most up-to-date value or an error should be returned. Now let's start off by looking at a system with a single server. If we store data on this server and call it X, then all reads to subsequent clients will read the most up-to-date value of X. If client one updates this value to say three, when client two goes to read from the database, it's going to see this updated value. The result is going to be instantly available to all other clients within this system. There will be no stale data returned to any client. So consistency in this system is straightforward. But as you can see, there are a couple of problems. This server is a single point of failure. What would happen if traffic to the site increases and we're processing thousands upon thousands of requests per second? So we have clients times one mil. The system in itself is going to become overloaded. So it's either going to increase the latency of the end user or completely break the system. So we need to consider scaling the system to support this load. And this is where the difficulty in achieving consistency becomes particularly challenging when we start to introduce extra nodes to the system. So let's have a look at that. So let's say we add two extra nodes to the system, both of which are just copies of the original node and are all actively processing requests from clients. Now let's say that within the system, X is equal to four. So all the data within these nodes is consistent. Now say client one creates a request to update the value of X and it updates it to three. We have updated the data within node one to the value of three. Now the problem is this database node and this database node are now referencing stale data. So if a client makes a request to this database to read that information or a client makes a request to this database to read this information, it's going to return stale data. So in order to maintain consistency amongst these nodes, we need to look at propagating the updated data to all nodes that have a copy of it. And how we do this will depend on the type of consistency we decide to use within the system. So we have two main types of consistency. We have strong consistency and we have eventual consistency. Now strong consistency ensures that every read operation on the system returns the most recent write value or error out if it can't. And one of the key attributes that strong consistency provides is it provides linearizability. In other words, under strong consistency, all the nodes within the system present a coherent and synchronized view of the data. And any read operations reflect the latest committed write. So this system would act as though there was a single node as discussed in the previous example. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We are going to be publishing a lot more system design content over the coming months. So make sure you're always getting notified of new releases. Now, our current configuration, as you can see, there is inconsistencies here. So in order to achieve this effect in this system, during replication time, so during this period here, where this node replicates to this node and also replicates to this node, all read requests to nodes two and three need to be temporarily blocked using coordination mechanisms such as locks or consensus algorithms. So what's going to happen is the nodes are no longer going to be processing any requests on the copies until this data is updated. So once this data is replicated to all nodes, the nodes then start to process the client's request again. And now these clients will receive updated information when requesting information from the copy nodes.
Now this replication lag can be dramatically increased if, say for example, the copy nodes are within a different data center, which is a common approach to increasing redundancy. Then data replication will take a non-trivial amount of time within this kind of system. So you can see the challenges that we are going to be facing. Now you may actually decide you don't want a system to have a strong level of consistency and you would rather prioritize availability and performance so availability in the context of distributed systems and databases refers to the ability of a system to remain operational and accessible despite failures and disruptions where every request receives a valid response. But this response doesn't have to be up to date. So it's a measure of a system's readiness to respond to requests and provide services to users. So we want to provide a high level of availability. So say in our service level agreement, we specify five nines. And remember five nines, is the gold standard of availability where it provides a downtime of 5.26 minutes per year. So what this system is going to do is it's going to allow for temporary inconsistencies within the data with the guarantee that given enough time and the absence of further updates, all replicas will eventually update to the same state. So take for example, client one updating x equals three to x equals four. As soon as this is processed, these two nodes still have stale data within them. But this connection is going to remain open. These nodes are not gonna stop processing data from other clients. So this remains open and this will return stale data for the interim period of this replication process. And eventually consistency will be reached. So in this case, each replica is operating independently and eventually receives updates from node one asynchronously. And this type of system becomes extremely useful in systems like YouTube video view counters, where the accurate real-time count of views for each video on a channel is not a critical concern. So temporary staleness in this data is acceptable. However, in contrast, consider a stock trading platform where maintaining up-to-date stock prices is a primary concern. In such a system, opting for strong consistency becomes essential, even if it comes at the expense of slightly slow system performance. The choice between eventual and strong consistency, as always, depends on the specific requirements and priorities of the application or system you're building. And as we mentioned, the CAP theorem states that a distributed system can only provide at most two or three of these at one time. So a system can be CP, for example, where the system delivers consistency tolerance and partition tolerance. This means that in the face of, say, a network partition, the system ensures data consistency. So the system continues to operate, but it might limit some processes. So for example, Requests to node two and three are going to be limited until this network petition is resolved. Once this network petition is resolved and this information right here has propagated to the correct nodes, then these limits on the nodes or the locks on the nodes will be released. So in the system, if we allowed updates during the network failure, the new state wouldn't be able to replicate to other nodes due to the lack of communication between the nodes. And this would result in subsequent reads returning potentially inconsistent values. We also have AP systems, where we prioritize availability tolerance and partition tolerance over strong consistency. So this means that in the face of network partitions, these requests to the database nodes will remain open, available for operations and continue to serve requests. And just like we mentioned earlier, this is going to be operating under eventual consistency. So this may return inconsistent data, but as soon as this network partition has been resolved, this data will propagate to these nodes asynchronously and it will be referencing consistent data, resyncing to a consistent state. And the last option is CA, which optimizes for consistency tolerance and availability tolerance, where our system prioritizes consistency and availability. And this is a controversial topic where the CAP theorem starts to fall apart because it assumes that a database can maintain consistency and availability as long as database nodes can communicate with each other, implying that network petitions are not possible. Now with this perspective, relying on the assumption that network petitions will never occur is unrealistic at best. And we know from availability calculations that a system can be nine nines of availability, but it will never reach 100% given the possibility of catastrophes or outages. Therefore, depending on this assumption is neither effective nor practical. So this system is not possible. So to wrap up, it's crucial to understand that these concepts are not black and white. They exist on a continuum. So it's not about choosing between absolute consistency or complete availability. Instead, it involves finding a balance where you may trade off a bit of consistency for improved availability or vice versa. And with that being said, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.